Hey guys, this is Mainaki or Swill Bro, and you are watching today's episode on building design using Tekla Structural Designer. So many people had you know, commented on my LinkedIn and messaged me on LinkedIn that they wanted to get started uh, in their structural engineering career and they want some tips uh, from me. The first thing which uh, any uh, you know civil engineer needs to connect is that to connect the theory with the you know practical uh, ongoing things and uh, especially if you work in uh, you know any normal consultancy companies or normal you know construction companies then or or you want to you know start a freelancing thing or you want to start your own consultancy things then you need to uh, pick up a skill and uh, you know master some you know different skill sets like structural engineering uh, sorry uh, preparation of structural drawing 3d estimate and plan at least these four things you need to have a grasp on so uh, in the uh, in a particular field of building design the subjects in uh, you know in your btech which you really need to focus on and which are really helpful is the design of rcc structure design of steel structures then your estimate which is very important but you know in many cases it is you know neglected but it is very important estimate and then survey so these are you know four most important subjects and i can add to that your you know strength of materials and you know structural analysis so you know all this uh, mainly the six subjects if you you know just uh, do well and you prepare well or revise then you can enter into the field of structural engineering because you know some recommend you know just going through the th- you know theory part first of the various you know uh, that is the various bending movement shear force and various design and then jumping the software i also recommend that uh, you know just uh, having an idea of the theory or revising the theory and then entering to learn the software so this this uh, relating to theory is very important because that's what makes us engineer otherwise we are only following some steps to get a particular result okay so always remember that even if you are you know if you learn a particular software or or a skill and you have joined a company if you are earning make sure you you just connect all this with the theory of from the six subjects which i have mentioned so that you know you can have better confidence and you can develop better skill and uh, over time so we'll move on to the next phase so we're moving on the second phase so i recommend that if after each phase you just take a break uh, just uh, have some you know any any light water uh, tea green tea coffee or whatever you like and after that you can come back so in the second phase we'll discuss uh, you know what are the types of you know supports which we you know uh, encounter you know in general in the field okay so uh, generally when we are you know just uh, learning what are the types of supports which you are learning mainly in uh, theory most of the problems which you do are simply supported in theory but in the field uh, if you if i just go by the order of the you know support conditions or beams where you know you have to we have to just analyze then you will have mostly you have continuous and then you have fixed and then in some cases you might have cantilever and in very rare cases you will have this simply supported yes simply supported is the most common and but in the field it is very rare as you know as you might have seen also observed structures also so that is one thing i want to just get you familiarized with and then another thing in design we are always taking uh, for the grade of steel uh, grade of steel we are always taking in the books in the all the standard textbooks we are taking fp415 so fp415 steel is not available it is it is a low, way long gone currently uh, we are using fp in the market it is available you know grade of steel fp500 is available fp550 uh, is available and fp tata is also launched fp600 so others will also launch eventually so fp600 is also available so these are the three grades which are available in the market mostly will you will deal with fp500 and now you might ask why the textbooks have been updated so that is another question but mostly you will find the design with these three grades of steel okay now another interesting thing is that in uh, real life uh, that is the or first let's first speak, speak about the theory in theory the dead load which you find that is the or the self weight of the object rather self weight of the object is ignored okay self weight is ignored in theory in most cases you assume a massless you know center line and then you analyze 
or you don't take into account the self weight but here you know in all cases in real life structure you need to consider the self weight and uh, you know this in this uh, theory you can consider uh, the 2d elements in the analysis but you have to consider 3d elements in the real life so if you are considering 3d elements then software really makes this things easy for us for analyzing and design so welcome to the third phase i uh, hope you had a break so here first of all we are discussing about the software which uh, in generally used for design by the is code uh, gentling so the most commonly used is stat uh, pro in the stat pro uh, there is a separate software for the uh, foundation design stat foundation and then uh, for the you know in the csi company there is the etab software which is also you know i'll say the second most used or the first most used it is software and uh, for the foundation design uh, csi has a software called safe in which you can design the foundation and the third uh, which uh, is of bentley uh, you know sorry it is of trimble company it is the tecla textile designer and in tecla textile designer you can do foundation design itself when all the three software none of the software it does this staircase design we, you need to provide the load of the staircase on the model because there is a lot of movements and uh, loads uh, due to the staircase you need to provide the you know model of the staircase which will do in our modeling in the tecla textile designer foundation design since stad and it has doesn't do foundation design you have to move other software like this stad foundation safe for the foundation design in terms of if you are using these two but if you are using tecla textile designer you can design the foundation in the in the particular software itself so that saves your time you have to appreciate you know you know tremble for that and then you have this slab design now slab design uh, is done in tecla is done in stad and etabs also but that is not much uh, convincing as per my experience that is only my personal opinion maybe i have not got all the things right so but i recommend using excel sheets for slab design foundation design and staircase design you can purchase good excel sheets uh, you know that are, that are available in you can search youtube also you'll find many people who are you know hard working and make some excel sheets so you can just purchase those excel sheets and use those excel sheets for these three uh, designs and uh, if you're using tecla you, you don't need to the foundation design but i recommend that you have you know, good excel sheets working excel sheets for design of these three uh, you know uh, components of the building okay so and there are other things as well but you know these are the general things there are shear walls and other things as well but these are general things i am telling that you need this so let's move on to the software user interface so welcome to the fourth part hope you had a break so before you know starting introduction to the user interface we'll first learn how to download the software so you can just go to google and uh, just type here uh, download tecla structural designer so let's see what happens so when you click on this and you see that the first option or in fact the second option download tecla structural design free trial just click on this and you know all the you know materials which i'll use in this video center line autocad files i'll all share that uh, in the you know description i'll give a link in a compressed file i'll all share that okay so you see that we have uh, here a video in which you can just see that uh, there are processes given for download and uh, you know after installing this you will get a you know at least a 45 days trial version and uh, and in that trial version you can just uh, use and learn the software and use it for 45 days so, okay so now uh, once you have downloaded and installed the software by following the uh, procedure in the trimble website then we will follow the modeling or the introduction to the user interface so i have taken a model and uh, so that i can introduce you don't worry about how this is made we'll all learn learn it in, uh, in the for the steps so first of all let's see here first uh, button as you can see it is the home button and uh, in this home you'll find options of new file you know where you can open create a new file here uh, open close save save as project uh, description and this is an important thing the model settings in the model settings you can just change to any country which you want if you want to design by bs code if you want to design by ci codes you can choose that and accordingly all the design codes will come okay and if you want to change the design codes you can also you uh, that in addition to the previous one you should go to the available settings and you can choose it from here so i have worked on this for and if you want to add any you can just import from you know suppose uh, you can say uh, uk 
and then click on OK, then the UK settings will be imported and then you can select it from here. So like that, you can work on the codes of any country which you want using this. And these are, uh, you know, remaining steps here. We will discuss them later because I'm just introducing the basic ones. So then we have BIM integration and in BIM integration will find options of importing or exporting to, you know, Tecla, Stead, uh, eTabs. So there are various uh, things which you can do in this uh, particular thing. And then you have the model. And in this model, uh, we mainly all the steps are in the modeling part. So creation of grids and then creation of, uh, you know, beams, columns, whether it be steel, whether it be concrete and making slabs and then uh, you know making panels wind panels measurement all you can do in the model section in the edit you can do copy uh, join and uh, you know move so all these things you can do with the help of in this uh, edit tab and the load tab and in addition to using this particular you know loads uh, from the drop down menu below you can add any type of load here you can add you know live loads dead loads the pack or the panel loads uh, you can add the you know point loads every load you can add here and also seismic load every load you can add here and in the drop down you can see this is for the you know basic loading and this is for the load combinations we have you know defined the load combinations here you can see these are the load combinations and like this you can do okay and uh, here next comes the design for beginners you can just use the design all static uh, for the designing process if you want to design by you know uh, response spectrum analysis the structure becomes a little heavy on that is uneconomical uh, but you can design if there is a requirement to design by RSA, you can do that and you can design slabs using this and there are other checks which will introduce but mainly these things and in design the settings is also important where you can choose uh, you know this various types of settings like uh, spacing between reinforcement maximum and minimum reinforcement which is to be used so all these things you can change in the settings and the foundations part you can these things are used to assign the foundation and and design the foundation okay so this is the foundation tab in the report tab uh, you can generate the reports of you know this uh, loads applied and uh, whether the structure is the, the design report or the, whether the structure is safe or not everything you can do it here and draw all the drawings that is the uh, you know foundation drawing beam column plan of the plinth level of the other levels or uh, slab drawing foundation drawing everything you can generate using this and it will be saved to an autocad file okay and then comes the you know windows part and if you want to just open or you know close a window you can do it from here by default all the windows are selected then comes the review and after the design is done you can check some of the things with the there is a ratio of steel which has been used with the help of review so these are the basic things and there is an important thing that the, this is the left panel like you find in ETABs also, there is a left panel in which there are, you know, there's one is a structure in which various levels are there. Suppose I click on any level, I can go into that particular level. And we have the grids here, uh, center line, like this, you can see the grids. So all these details, you'll find the structure. And then you have this, uh, you know, a status bar, whether if there is any error in the structure, I can go to model and uh, validate. So if there is any error in validation, it will show it like here. It is showing uh, that is beam to center to center line will not receive self slab load. So it is showing a warning here. So like this, it will show a warning. If everything is okay, then it will show everything as you know green tick. Okay. Then you can go to your uh, you know your structure and uh, you can see below there is a properties option. So suppose I click on any beam here. So my the property of the beam will come here like this. Like this, a beam is 215 to 350. Uh, you know this uh, this is the size of the beam. Suppose I can go here from 2D to 3D and I can click on this particular load, the load of retail that is, is an imposed load or live load with a you know load of two kilonewton per meter square. This load details comes around here. So with this, I can toggle between 2D and 3D. So this is very important. And with the help of mouse middle button, I can use the pan. So, uh, you know, these things I can just delete and, uh, you know, just open it again, all any, any of the views I can delete. And open it again i need to simply need to go to structure and if i click on any level i can open that particular level so let me go to structure 3d and if you want to just rotate in here you can just do it using this uh, you know particular option given in the block okay this is similar to autocad so suppose i want here you know the top view i can go here like this i want this view 
and I can do it like this here. Another important thing is this uh, scene content. Uh, suppose I want to, you know, hide the slab items so that I can assign my, you know, any particular item better. I can do that using this. So this is pretty handy. You know, you can you can uh, assign or you can uh, just show or remove the load. Suppose uh, I can see uh, here. This is the loads here. I can show suppose dead load from here. I can show uh, you know any any imposed load from here. This is my choice, and we can do it here like this. So these are the basic things uh, in the user interface of the Tecla Structural Designer. We'll learn more and we'll learn the things which are required to model in the upcoming sessions. So we can take a break uh, from this session and I can continue uh, for the next or the fifth session. The fifth session will be how to make a center line plan. So welcome to the fifth session that is preparing center line from architectural plan. So we have a small architectural plan here. Uh, you can see there are two bedrooms and one staircase and all the things have been done in mm so first of all the first thing which you need to do is remove all the other things which we don't need and uh, make this a simple you know plan and then uh, suppose this stair for the staircase part you can just uh, take a line here uh, like this basically we are going to prepare this for important tecla structural designer so and then you can just uh, delete this and then you can keep a line here because this will be imported in our model. We just want to know that uh, there will be staircase. So there will be no slab. Okay. So uh, the next thing which we are uh, going to do is we are going to go to layers and we're going to create two layers. Okay. First layer I'm going to create for the column and I'm give a red color to it. And then we'll select this and the next layer of the center line. I'll just write it CL for the center line and give it a uh, this color 52 and I'll make this you know line type dotted okay if you don't have dotted you can just use it from the load okay and uh, you know after having done that just close it and first of all I make the columns so I'll select the column and then I'll take a rectangle click anywhere and at the rate I'm going to provide you know columns of 300 mm to 300 mm so I'm going to write here at the rate 300 comma 300 and then enter so after the columns are ready i'll press ha enter and then uh, we can just hatch it okay select solid and i'll hatch it has the columns okay then we'll select this and copy this okay and we'll select paste it in the reference points first of all let's paste it on at the intersections here let's place one column here and escape and then select this again copy select this as the reference point and then paste from the column here and we will again do add more columns for this room let's uh, select this p and uh, we'll select this as the reference point add a column here like this copy let take this as a reference point and we'll add a column here okay and the next column let's take and uh, place the next column we'll copy this take this and okay uh, this column is not in line so we we'll just need to bring it in line select this and then move this from here to here now it is in line so we'll select this both columns and uh, then we'll copy and we'll select this point and we'll paste it here move let's see we we'll copy this time let's select the top reference point copy this as the reference point top intersection and then paste it here and again for the last uh, staircase portion we'll again do the same copy paste it here for the staircase portion okay so we are done here and we'll delete this and now we'll go to the center line here uh, now we'll take a line 
for the center line you can also you know use a uh, you know any other thing like array but i'm using normal line and after that i'm just drawing it up to here and then i'll copy it from this center to this center vertical centers are provided now the horizontal centers I'll take a center from here escape and then i'll just extend it up to this and then i'll paste it to all the centers copy select this and then paste it at a center 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 and again center okay so now once this is done the center lines are made as you can see i'll go back to uh, the zero layer okay okay let's first check here all this are in the center line layer as you can see so now uh, we have you know added the center lines but if there are any secondary you know beams center beams will provide a for all those beams where we don't have a column to column junction we need to provide the beam for that also okay so here we have a you know toilet we can provide a secondary beam here so i'll just we have still in the center line option so i'll just take this you know and draw a center line here so actually this is a 125 mm wall so minimum there will be 250 mm uh, beam so 250 divided by 2 is 125 so anyway we'll have this you know offset in this two direction so there is no problem and here also uh, we'll add beam up to the slab portion so what we'll do we'll just select this and we'll copy and we'll copy it up to here so the beam will be up to here uh, we'll provide a beam and then, then there will be a slab okay uh, let's see if there is any other secondary beams which need to be provided no all are the primary that is have all have column to column junction so we've covered this thing in the in this plan as well so once this is done make sure you press save Control plus s and save this file and after you save this file the okay now this center line is small let's just extend this because it will create problems in the might create problems in the tech lab so we'll just extend it up to this much same okay this also we'll extend it and we'll extend it up to here or else we can just take a box and box like this select this and tr enter and then trim all the things which are outside That will give us a uniform center line in all directions. Okay, then we'll delete it. So our work is done here. We'll go back to zero layer, uh, save this model, and after that we'll have to save it as a DXF file. So for that you can just do the command. Simplest way is DXF out. Okay, enter, and then you can just save it in the file. So I'll uh, just type here center line for PhD, the plus textual designer, and save it in the AutoCAD 2000 or LT2000 DXF format so that I can open it in all the software. Just click on save. Okay. So once you have clicked on save, just uh, uh, you need to go to the Tecla textual designer and import it. Okay. So the next step will be importing. So let's go to Tecla textual designer. And click on file and click on new then this window will have, you know open and then we can import the file so before importing also there are some steps which will cover next but let's see whether our center line is okay or not okay so uh, you know just uh, we'll go to this model and we'll go to this uh, and this particular thing beyond uh, beside the construction levels click on import the except and we will just uh, you know just choose the position of the center line so this is the position of center line click on open and uh, here uh, we'll use uh, mm since the our drawing was in mm first of all we'll check only only the center line and then we're just checking we're not doing the final step select by layer and then click on finish so as you can see click on escape the center line has been imported properly next thing we want to import the architecture plan as a shadow import the except center line for thd and then uh, untick the center line remaining others will be selected click on shadow click on mm click on finish then you might need to zoom it you can see i'm zooming it 
so you have the center line here okay so center line has been imported then you can proceed to the next step so the next step i'll just press you know control plus z and remove this because in next step we have to create levels and then start the modeling part so our part five that is preparing center line for architectural plan is over and we will check that our whatever we have done is correct and it's properly importing in tecla and now we can take a break and after the break we'll start with the modeling of the building and uh, including the staircase portion okay welcome back to the sixth session in this session we will model the building including the staircase so let's get started first of all we'll start off with the new file and uh, once the new file is being created we'll just import the center line which you had made in the previous session so we'll go to model and first of all we'll before importing the center lines this time we will make the levels so we'll understand the levels here so basically this is a g plus one or a two-story building coming ground floor first floor the client has asked for only for the ground floor which will be constructed right now but i'm adding one more floor in for safety uh, if he you know considers going one more floor in the future so there will be ground floor first floor and i'll add a parapet wall also i'll give that load also so this will be done and uh, the plinth level is at 450 uh, depth uh, 450 mm and the foundation depth is 1.5 meter from the ground level so total if you see for the uh, bottom most base we have 1.95 meter so we are going to model the structure like this and we are going to need all these details so just for understanding hope you are clear with that so since you're clear now let's get started so we'll go to construction levels here and we'll just need to click on the construction levels and uh, click on insert below so this will be the bottommost level as you know our bottommost level is so let's uh, take this pl or the print level as zero then the bottommost level will be uh, below it so let's give a negative sign minus 1.95 meter okay so we'll just write here uh, minus 1.95 okay so now going back to the plinth level and we have two more levels that is uh, one three meter and three meter okay so here we find tof 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 is nothing but top of footing okay when you're not using slab you can use that tof and uh, uh, ssl is structural slab level when we're using slab you can use ssl okay tof top of, top of foundation and ssl structural slab level and tos is not required here top of steel okay so insert one above and make this this time ssl because we are using slab here and uh, this level will be you know don't need to change the level just change the spacing here three meters and give a slab thickness here we'll give a slab thickness here of uh, 125 mm and we'll insert another uh, floor above it so it is now uh, you know ground floor plus one there is d plus one building you know model has been you know levels has been created for the model okay just click on OK and you can check the models are uh, done properly or not. In the left tab, go to levels and you can check whether uh, in all the levels. You can see by default the structure 3D and the you know the plinth level or the structure base level has been you know open. And if you want to open any other level, just you need to double click on that particular level. Suppose I want to open the structure one. So for that, I need to just double click on the structure one and then structure one will open double click on structure 2 and structure 2 will open so like this that works it is very uh, pretty much simple okay so we'll start with the plinth level here and in the plinth level we'll just uh, import the same way which you had done in the previous session we'll click on import dxf our file is ready and test it and we'll just open it and this time just uh, we'll need the center line and we don't need anything else okay just click on the center line layer we'll import the architectural grids here unit is mm and then click on next and by layer and then we want the same center line on all the levels just click on finish here and click on escape center line has been selected uh, if the numbering is not uniform like this you can see don't worry because it doesn't matter okay so then we'll just uh, select import the except once again same steps will repeat this time for the artificial grid so this step is in the addition to etabs and stat pro this step is not there so what what it does it helps us that uh, to see our you know artificial grid so we don't have to see the uh, beam columnar again and again okay so it's very helpful 
So this time, just don't click on the center line. Just click on the shadow, and the unit is uh, we know that unit is mm, and then click on finish, and then uh, you might need to zoom. Okay, then I'm zooming in and finding the model here. Just click on escape, and you find this is the architectural you know grid in the form of shadow, which has been imported. Now you can easily you know find out in which location you have to give our beam or column. So in the modeling, uh, importing the center line uh, diagram and uh, before that making the construction levels have been done. So let, let's start with the modeling part. So uh, first of all, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are working uh, with uh, uh, you know, the proper structural elements. So we'll define our structural members. So first of all, let's define our columns here. Just need to click on this column and we'll use columns of 300 into 300 and uh, so for that just to go to the size and go to new and here we'll write 300 mm into 300 mm okay click on ok and uh, grade of steel we are using fp500 as you are told fp500 is the grade of steel which is being used and first of all initially you can see we are using m20 grade of concrete okay so you don't need to change anything this is the one which you're using just one small thing in this uh, automatic alignment just untick this okay then you are good to go and after that just click on save okay so we'll name save this as c1 and we'll write the size 300 cross uh, 300 this is the size which has been saved just click on okay and after that we'll just uh, assign our columns like this as you can see it's pretty simple you can also assign it like this you know just uh, you know make a box near any center line it will it will get selected like this so it's pretty simple to you know just uh, assign all the columns so like this we can you know create all the columns so once these columns are created you can just click on escape and you can see in the 3d view and so now going back to the base uh, the plinth level here we need to assign our print beam so let's go to beam here and just uh, simply click on this uh, option of your beam and you can see the properties pop up so let's define the properties of the beam so here we'll define beam size 215 to 300 for the plane beam and for the roof beam we'll use 215 to 350 we'll just click on ok and we'll just uh, change this fe500 and this also fe500 and cover as you can see as per indian code they have taken automatically if you want to change it you can change to 40, 30, 45, or you know, 35, anything you can do. So uh, you just save this and I'll just save it here B1 uh, 250 cross 300. Okay. And uh, we'll define another, you know, just beam. Just uh, we'll just change the size here 250 cross 350. Just click on OK. Remaining parameters are OK and we'll save it and we'll name it B2 250 cross 50. Then click on OK. So to start assigning the beams, we'll go to model and select the beam. And then uh, we'll just take the beam for the print level that is uh, 300 depth. And we'll just make the secondary beam first for the toilet wall. First click and then double click here. And after that, just click on escape and then double click on it. And then since both ends do not have any columns attached, so this will be, you know, pinned. And if uh, what is end one and end two, if the, there is a vertical member, bottom one is end one and top one is end two. If this is a, you know, horizontal member like this, the left one will be end one and the right one will be and two this is based on the coordinate system okay we'll you know know more about it later just click on okay for now and again this uh, this time um, just select the size again for the beams just click on the beam and then select the size 15 to 300 and then let's join the beams like this you can use the you know mouse middle button to you know do it and pan mouse bindle button and click and uh, do the pan and uh, you can zoom in and out using the scroll button okay just to join it like this and uh, the vertical members join now the horizontal ones one by one will join you see this process is pretty simple 
okay so like this we have done uh, let's check in the 3d view so this is done you can rotate in the 3d view using the right uh, you know uh, press button in your mouse you can rotate it like this so let's go back to the base and click on escape so once this is done uh, we will copy this to the next level let's go and uh, copy this to the next level so for that we'll go to construction levels make the source of one as base and click on okay now we'll quickly go to construction levels once again make the sources unique and then click on okay we'll go to the front view select all the beams and from here make sure we select concrete beam spans now we can increase the size here so we'll just make this the next size which you've provided that is 350 because the beams here will have more you know moments to bear so there will be more load here so the thickness will require more so click on escape and uh, after that just click on the default 3d view so you can see this is the view now you can go to this level for that go to structure open the levels go to structure one and here go to slab we can assign one way and two way slabs in tecla structural designer but it only designs the two way slab and it takes only the load of one way slab but you cannot design one way slab here okay so two way slab 125 mm thickness m20 gate concrete if there is not as per this you can change it click it click save then i'll just name this two way uh, 125 mm okay and then click on okay and then i'll assign the slabs in all the beams between all the beams this portion is staircase so i'll leave it back end just go to the structure go to construction levels make this as one now so we'll copy all this to the next level click on okay this is done go to construction levels and uh, make this source as unique and click on okay again again check whether all are unique now it's good so now for the staircase we'll we can do the modeling before that before you know modeling the staircase we'll just uh, assign our support so the support condition will be fixed so we'll go to the front view and then zoom in and then select the you know support conditions like this and after that we'll make all the ends as fixed So now, as you can see in the 3D view, all the support conditions are fixed. Now for the staircase portion. So uh, in uh, ETABS and in uh, you know STAT, when I'll just make the full model, you can see that there are options of you know providing staircase. You can provide the landing as well as the, then the staircase. We you can provide for providing the loads. In none of no software you can design, but you can provide the loads properly. But in Tecla, you uh, you know I've tried you know providing the you know landing slab. Even I've taken training from the you know Tecla. Uh, you know authorized training centers so you know that directly from the trimble i've taken the training uh, so in that also they said that uh, you know you, you need to provide uh, the landings directly in the form of flat slab so just to you know we'll just provide a you know beam in between like this and just to you know, provide the load we'll uh, draw, give two flat slabs to provide the load of the landing as well as the slabs but in etabs and uh, in uh, stat you can provide the landing and the uh, steps uh, on the waste slab properly but here you can only provide the waste slab so you provide the waste slab only without the landing okay otherwise if you provide the landing then it it generates errors so so we'll provide the load of the staircase now so for first of all you need an intermediate you know level here to provide this intermediate level i'll use the you know best and the most easiest way we'll go to construction levels so we'll go to base and i'll click on insert above so you see automatically a limit level is created like this can make this SSL if you want and uh, make the slab thickness as 125 okay just uh, for the sake and click on one and also click on insert above and then also on another level is created at the middle and here also SSL 125 is done click on okay and here we'll go to uh, your you know structure base one that is the mid level and uh, in this mid level we can uh, create one beam select the beam and select the 350 beam and then create this beam like this and then we'll go to next uh, you know mid level and then also zoom in and we'll select the beam and we'll just make the uh you know select the beam again and then we'll just uh, okay select the beam properly like this and then we'll just uh, do the property so it is hanging for some reason just uh, go here and select the beam just escape once again just to you know let the software refresh click on beam now it has come so now 
we'll just use the 350 uh, beam, 350 depth beam, and select the beam like this. Just uh, press on escape and click on uh, the 3D view. So you can see in the 3D view that two beams are placed like this. So once the two beams are placed, now as I told you, we cannot place the landing, uh, you know, properly in this uh, uh, software. So we'll place the wedge slab of the staircase directly. So for that, use this flat slab and uh, flat slab uh, you'll use here. Uh, let's give it a, you know, depth of 125, same as the slab, M20 grade concrete. Make this diaphragm as none. So we'll save this as my uh, flat 125. Okay, I'll just click on OK. So now it's very easy to assign the flat slab. See this line, okay, in the 3D view. The middle one, the big uh, red one is the middle portion. Similarly, in this one also, in this particular also, you see the middle portion. You see two dots on the left, two dots on the right. So this is the middle portion. Se select this end portion and select double click on this portion. So as you can see, slab has been assigned like this. Okay, after slab is created for one level, go to flat slab once again and select your flat 125 again for the next level. So just select the middle portion and we already know the middle portion, rotate it and select the middle portion of this particular beam carefully. You can see two dots on the right, right and two dots on the left. So this is the middle portion and then you see this is the end portion of this and this is the end portion of this. You need to double click on the last portion. So once this is done, click on escape and after that click on this and click on this and you can just select any reference point i'll go to edit and go to copy and then we'll i'll select this as a reference point uh, i'll just rotate a bit to be more clear specific so this as you can see many reference points are coming i'll just select this one as my reference point this intersection of beam uh, two beams and copy it here you know paste it here so like this you know i have you know just uh, copied this wish steps like this you can insert the loads also so right now the only one thing is remaining that is the headroom portion so we can go to the uh, you know model and construction levels and you can add another level here so generally headroom is a maximum you find nine feet so if you do nine divided by 3.28 you find 2.74 so give this spacing uh, as 2.74 and by the way while adding this middle levels if your you know level doesn't come 1.5 you can just insert 1.5 spacing as well or the spacing, you know, the three meter divided by two, that is 1.5, whatever spacing you take, just take the middle uh, or the half amount, okay? Just click on okay. And uh, once you've done that, uh, just click on escape. And after that, select these four, uh, you know, these columns where there will be headroom and then uh, make the top level as this 8.74. So now you can go to the topmost level, go to structure, uh, go to the topmost level here, and uh, take the beams and since the top beam and uh, select here 250 to 350 and assign these beams and also just assign a slab topmost beam portion so this is done so now we have you know you know model the building along with the staircase we have done everything so now the final step is your validation so when you click on validate now as you can see in this particular model everything is green so our model is okay so now we have completed our sixth part that is modeling the building including the staircase so we move on to the seventh part of assigning the loads so we can take a break and return after the break because we need a fresh mind for that welcome back to the sixth session in this session we will model the building including the staircase so let's get started first of all we'll start off with the new file and uh, once the new file is being created We'll just import the center line which you had made in the previous session. So we'll go to model and first of all, we'll before importing the center lines this time, we will make the levels. So we'll understand the levels here. So basically, this is a G plus one or a two story building coming ground floor, first floor. The client has asked for only for the ground floor, which will be constructed right now. But I'm adding one more floor in for safety. Uh, if he you know considers going one more floor in the future. So there will be ground floor, first floor, and I'll add a parapet wall also. I'll give that load also. So this will be done. And uh, the plinth level is at 450 uh, depth, uh, 450 mm. And the foundation depth is 1.5 meter from the ground level. So total, if you see, for the uh, bottom most base, we have 1.95 meter. So we are going to model the structure like this. And we are going to need all these details. So just for understanding, hope you are clear with that. So since you're clear, now let's get started. 
so we'll go to construction levels here and we'll just need to click on the construction levels and uh, click on insert below so this will be the bottommost level as you know our bottommost level is so let's uh, take this pl or the print level as zero then the bottommost level will be uh, below it so let's give a negative sign minus 1.95 meter okay so we'll just write here uh, minus 1.95 okay so now going back to the print level and we have two more levels that is uh, one three meter and three meter okay so here we find tof 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 is nothing but top of footing okay when you're not using slab you can use that tof and uh, uh, ssl is structural slab level when we're using slab you can use ssl okay tof top of, top of foundation and ssl structural slab level and tos is not required here top of steel okay so insert one above and make this this time ssl because we are using slab here and uh, this level will be you know don't need to change the level just change the spacing here three meters and give a slab thickness here we'll give a slab thickness here of uh, 125 mm and we'll insert another uh, floor above it so it is now uh, you know ground floor plus one there is d plus one building you know model has been you know levels has been created for the model okay just click on okay and you can check the models are uh, done properly or not in the left tab go to levels and you can check whether uh, in all the levels you can see by default the structure 3d and the you know the plinth level or the structure base level has been you know open and if you want to open any other level just you need to double click on that particular level suppose i want to open the structure one so for that i need to just double click on the structure one and then structure one will open double click on structure two and structure two will open so like this that works it is very uh, pretty much simple okay so we'll start with the plinth level here and in the plinth level we'll just uh, import the same way which you have done in the previous session we'll click on import dxf our file is ready and test it and we'll just open it and this time just uh, we'll need the center line and we don't need anything else okay just click on the center line layer we'll import the architectural grids here unit is mm and then click on next and by layer and then we want the same center line on all the levels just click on finish here and click on escape center line has been selected uh, if the numbering is not uniform like this you can see don't worry because it doesn't matter okay so then we'll just uh, select import the except once again same steps will repeat this time for the architectural grid so this step is in the addition to etabs and tad pro this step is not there so what what it does it helps us that uh, to see our you know artificial grid so we don't have to see the uh, you know, beam column done again and again okay so it's very helpful so this time just don't click on the center line just click on the shadow and the unit is uh, we know that unit is mm and then click on finish and then uh, you might need to zoom okay then i'm zooming in and finding the model here just click on escape and you find this is the architectural you know grid in the form of shadow which has been imported now you can easily you know find out in which location you have to give our beam or column so in the modeling uh, importing the center line uh, diagram and uh, before that making the construction levels have been done so let let's start with the modeling part so uh, first of all uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are working uh, with uh, uh, you know the proper structural elements so we'll define our structural members so first of all let's define our columns here just need to click on this column and we'll use columns of 300 into 300 and uh, so for that just to go to this size and go to new and here we'll write 300 mm into 300 mm okay click on ok and uh, grade of steel we are using fe 500 as you are told fe 500 is the grade of steel which is being used and first of all initially you can see we are using m20 grade of concrete okay so you don't need to change anything this is the one which you're using just one small thing in this uh, automatic alignment just untick this okay then you are good to go and after that just click on save okay so we'll name save this as c1 and we'll write the size 300 cross uh, 300 this is the size which has been saved just click on ok and after that we will just uh, assign our columns like this as you can see it is pretty simple you can also assign it like this 
you know just uh, you know make a box near any center line it will be, it will get selected like this so it's pretty simple to you know just uh, assign all the columns so like this we can you know create all the columns so once this columns are created you can just click on escape and you can see in the 3d view and so now going back to the base or uh, the plinth level here we need to assign our print beam so let's go to beam here and just uh, simply click on this uh, option of your beam and you can see the properties pop up so let's define the properties of the beam so here we'll define beam size 215 to 300 for the plane beam and for the roof beam we'll use 215 to 350 we'll just click on ok and we'll just uh, change this fe500 and this also fe500 and cover as you can see as per indian code they have taken automatically if you want to change it you can change to 40 30 45 or you know 35 anything you can do so uh, you just save this and i'll just save it here b1 uh, 250 cross 300 okay and uh, we'll define another you know just beam just uh, we'll just change the size here to t cross c50 just click on ok remaining parameters are ok and we'll save it and we'll name it b2 250 cross 50 then click on ok so to start assigning the beams we'll go to model and select the beam and then uh, we'll just take the beam for the plinth level that is a uh, 300 depth and we'll just make the secondary beam first for the toilet wall first click and then double click here and after that just click on escape and then double click on it and then since both ends do not have any columns attached so this will be you know pinned and if uh, what is end one and end two if the, there is a vertical member bottom one is end one and top one is end two if this is a you know horizontal member like this the left one will be end one and the right one will be N2. This is based on the coordinate system. Okay. We'll you know know more about it later. Just click on OK for now. And again, just uh, this time, um, just select the size again for the beams. Just click on the beam and then select the size 215 to 300. And then let's join the beams like this. You can use the you know mouse middle button to you know do it and pan mouse middle button and click and uh, do the pan and uh, you can zoom in and out using the scroll button okay just to join it like this and uh, the vertical members join now the horizontal ones one by one will join you see this process is pretty simple okay so like this we have done uh, let's check in the 3d view so this is done you can rotate in the 3d view using the right uh, you know uh, press button in your mouse you can rotate it like this so let's go back to the base and click on escape. So once this is done, uh, we will copy this to the next level. Let's go and uh, copy this to the next level. So for that, we'll go to construction levels, make the source of one as base and click on OK. Now we'll quickly go to construction levels once again, make the sources unique and then click on OK. We'll go to the front view, select all the beams. And from here, make sure we select concrete beam spans now we can increase the size here so we'll just make this the next size which i provided that is 350 because the beams here will have more you know moments to bear so there will be more load here so the thickness will require more so click on escape and uh, after that just click on the default tree view so you can see this is the view now you can go to this level for that go to structure open the levels go to structure one and here go to slab we can assign one way and two way slabs in the cluster textual designer but it only designs the two way slab and it takes only the load of one way slab but you cannot design one way slab here okay so two way slab 125 mm thickness m20 gate concrete if there is not as per this you can change it click, click save then i'll just name this two way uh, 125 mm okay and then click on okay and then I'll assign the slabs in all the beams, between all the beams. This portion is staircase, so I'll leave it back end. Just go to the structure, go to construction levels, 
make this as one now so we'll copy all this to the next level click on okay this is done go to construction levels and uh, make this source as unique and click on okay again again check whether all are unique now it's good so now for the staircase we'll we can do the modeling before that before you know modeling the staircase we'll just uh, assign our support so the support condition will be fixed so we'll go to the front view and then zoom in and then select the you know support conditions like this and after that we'll make all the ends as fixed so now as you can see in the 3d view all the support conditions are fixed now for the staircase portion so uh, in uh, etabs and in uh, you know stat when i'll just make the full model you can see that there are options of you know providing staircase you can provide the landing as well as the, then the staircase you can provide for providing the loads in none of no software you can design but you can provide the loads properly but in tecla you uh, you know i have tried you know providing the you know landing slab even i have taken training from the you know tecla uh, you know authorized training centers so you know that directly from the trimble i have taken the training uh, so in that also they said that uh, you know you, you need to provide uh, the landings directly in the form of flat slab so just to you know we'll just provide a, you know beam in between like this and just to you know, provide the load we'll uh, draw, give two flat slabs to provide the load of the landing as well as the slabs but in etabs and uh, in uh, stat you can provide the landing and the uh, steps uh, on the waste slab properly but here you can only provide the waste slab so we'll provide the waste slab only without the landing okay otherwise if you provide the landing then it it generates errors so so we'll provide the load of the staircase now so for first of all you need an intermediate you know level here to provide this intermediate level i'll use the you know best and the most easiest way we'll go to construction levels we'll go to base and i'll click on insert above so you see automatically a limit level is created like this you can make this ssl if you want and uh, make this slab thickness as 125 okay just uh, for the sake and click on one and also click on insert above and then also on another level is created at the middle and here also SSL 125 is done. Click on OK, and here we'll go to uh, your you know structure base one, that is the mid level, and uh, in this mid level we can uh, create one beam. Select the beam and select the 350 beam, and then create this beam like this, and then we'll go to next uh, you know mid level, and then also we'll zoom in, and we'll select the beam, and we'll just make the uh, you know select the beam again and then we'll just uh, okay select the beam properly like this and then we'll just uh, do the property so it is hanging for some reason just uh, go here and select the beam just escape once again just to you know let the software refresh click on beam now it has come so now we'll just use the 350 uh, beam to the beam and select the beam like this just play, press on escape and click on uh, the 3d view so you can see in the 3d view that two beams are placed like this so once the two beams are placed now as i told you we cannot place the landing uh, you know properly in this uh, uh, software so we'll place the waste slab of the staircase directly so for that use this flat slab and uh, flat slab uh, you'll use here uh, let's give it a you know depth of 125 same as the slab m20 grade concrete make this diaphragm as none so we'll save this as my uh, flat 125 okay i'll just click on okay so now it's very easy to assign the flat slab see this line okay in the 3d view the middle one the big uh, red one is the middle portion similarly in this one also in this particular also you see the middle portion you see two dots on the left two dots on the right so this is the middle portion Se select this and portion and select double click on this portion so as you can see slab has been assigned like this okay after slab is created for one level go to flat slab once again and select your flat 125 again for the next level so just select the middle portion and we already know the middle portion rotate it and select the middle portion of this particular beam carefully you can see two dots on the right right and two dots on the left so this is the middle portion and then you see this is the end portion of this and this is the end portion of this you need to double click on the last portion so once this is done click on escape and after that click on this and click on this and you can just select any reference point i'll go to edit and go to copy and then we'll i'll select this as a reference point uh, i'll just rotate a bit to be more clear specific 
So this, as you can see, many reference points are coming. I'll just select this one as my reference point. This intersection of beam, uh, two beams, and copy it here. You know, paste it here. So like this, you know, I have you know just uh, you know, copied this wish steps like this. You can insert the loads also. So right now the only one thing is remaining that is the headroom portion. So we can go to the uh, you know model and construction levels, and you can add another level here. So generally headroom is maximum you find nine feet. So if you do nine divided by three point two eight, you find two point seven four. So give this spacing uh, as two point seven four. And by the way, while adding this middle levels, if your you know level doesn't come one point five, you can just insert one point five spacing as well. Or the spacing, you know, the three meter divided by two that is one point five. Whatever spacing you take, just take the middle. Uh, or the half amount, okay. Just click on OK, and uh, once you have done that, uh, just click on Escape, and after that, select these four, uh, you know, these columns where there will be headroom, and then uh, make the top level as this 8.74. So now you can go to the topmost level, go to structure, uh, go to the topmost level here, and uh, so take the beams, and since the top beam, and uh, select here 250 to 350. And assign these beams, and also just assign a slab topmost beam portion. So this is done. So now we have, you know, you know, model the building along with the staircase. We have done everything. So now the final step is your validation. So when you click on validate, now as you can see in this particular model, everything is green. So our model is okay. So now we have completed our sixth part, that is modeling the building, including the staircase. So we move on to the seventh part of assigning the loads. So we can take a break and return after the break because we need a fresh mind for that. So we'll begin the seventh session now, and the seventh session is about loading. So we're going to apply the loading by the use of the Indian codes. IS 875 Part 1 to 5 are the standard Indian codes for you know dead load, live load, and then your wind load, snow loads, and load combination. And IS 1893 is the code for earthquake load. So since the building here is less than 10 meters, there will be no wind load applied, but we'll apply the earthquake load and the load combinations. So let's get started. First of all, we'll start with the dead load. So for the dead load, there are two types of uh, loads mainly. Firstly, there is the self weight of the structure. So the self weight it will take into consideration automatically the software. So we don't need to assign the self weight like we need to do in the staircase of stat. So in ETAPS and in Tecla Structural Designer, the self weight is taken automatically. The next thing is our floor finish load. So we need to apply the floor finish load uh, in the particular uh, floors here above. That is the uh, down floor roof as as well as the first floor roof. So we, because the floor finish may be in the form of tiles, maybe in the form of you know CC or concrete floors. So the maximum you know the floor finish load which is which I have found is one point five. But on average, for normal materials, it is around one. If you want to check the details, you can go to IS 875 Part One and check out the different floor finish loads. So, so we'll take floor finish load of one kilonewton per meter square in this video. Okay. Since uh, I've already mentioned that in the plinth level there is no slab, as you can see here, there is uh, no slab here because in the plinth level, what is done generally, if you have been to the site, uh, periphery brickwork is done around the periphery, that is the boundary beams. And after that, uh, sand filling or the soil filling is done. It is compacted, and uh, after that, flooring, CC flooring, uh, PCC flooring is done. And now that you can put tiles or uh, anything. Only in the case of basement or in the case of like heavy industrial uh, buildings where the heavy machineries are used, there only uh, you will find slabs. Here. So general buildings, there will no no slabs in the plinth level. So generally, there will be no floor finished loads as the load will directly go into the compacted earth. So no need to consider that. So these are the things uh, which you know when you have experience at the site. So moving on now for the floor finish load of the building. So first of all, from the bottom, select the dead load from here, and uh, after you select the dead load, uh, you can go to the loading. I mean, the 3D view you can apply in the other views as well, but I'll apply it in 3D view, and uh, we'll go here. As you can see, there are various options for applying the load, and uh, we'll go here slab load. So in the slab load, we'll pick this load item, and uh, we'll just uh, insert load of uh, let's say one kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so we'll just put the slab load here and the slab load here. 
so uh, this particular uh, floor finish floor you can put here as well but in the staircase we'll put later so for the staircase part the floor finish floor will be around you know 0.5 you know if you consider the stairs it will be 0.5 to 1 and the load of the stair is also taken into consideration so I'll make a separate video on how to calculate the load of the stairs. It's very simple because if you're really using bricks, stairs on this waist slab, just you know to calculate the load. It comes between 1 to 1.5. So for the dead load part, we'll consider 1.5 the maximum, uh, the maximum load in terms of the dead load. And it will be applied in you know, because this particular thing which you've created includes both the landing and the waist slab. So it will be included in both the landing and the waist slab. So the design will be safe in terms of the loading because we are considering the maximum size so here we'll just give 1.5 for the landing and our waist level of the staircase so we'll apply this load like this and let's see if anything is remaining we'll apply it here so loads have been applied uh, you can note that in the in the above uh, portion that is in the portion where you have the headroom you don't need to apply any floor finish load because generally there is no tiles or other materials only concrete coating is enough okay so this is it for the floor finished loads and next is the load of the masonry so what we do we have seen the architectural plan so wherever we have the you know uh, you know walls we have put beams underneath it so the load of the walls will be taken by the beams so we need to calculate the you know load of the wall on the beams so we'll use a very simple procedure as we know the height here uh, that is three meters and the default height is three meters and uh, we already know that the beam uh, thickness which you have taken is your uh, 0.35 so 3 minus 0.35 so that leaves us with 2.65 for the uh, brick wall so using 2.665 height and uh, taking uh, and if you go through is 875 part 1 uh, that is the low code for the dead load you'll find the load of uh, you know your bricks as 19 and load of mortar that is the plaster which you're using as 20. so if you just uh, take an average and consider the maximum one let's say 20 for now so the load will be here uh, which is coming uh, your 2.65 that is what we had calculated 3 minus uh, your 0.35 that is 2.65 so we'll take uh, here 2.65 into the unit weight 2.65 meter is the unit weight that is 20 kilonewton per meter square which have taken an average of the uh, the maximum size among the uh, brick and the mortar Please note that if you are using you know double AC blocks or ply bricks, then this will reduce drastically. Okay, so uh, it will be 20 kilonewton per meter uh, meter cube, and into we'll multiply this by the width of the wall. So here uh, in this case, this uh, of this building, we are using five inch wall for the entire structure. Okay, in some places you will use ten uh, nine inch wall for outside and four inch wall for inside. In some places you will four inch wall for uh, all the uh, entire building. So I'm use, we are using here now five inch walls or 125 mm walls for the entire building. So we'll add here 0.125, enter. So the weight is coming as 6.625. So we'll apply this load of 6.625 on the entire uh, structure that is 6.625 kilonewton per meter in the case of red brick. So if you're using any other brick that is slash brick or lightweight bricks, then this will also get reduced, okay? So let's apply uh, this in the case of this low particular load 6.625. So firstly, uh, we can use it in the 3D view as well, uh, or you can apply it any other view. So let's uh, go in the base or the plinth level. Uh, we'll select that from here. It is easier to apply it here. We'll select full UDL and we'll select here uh, this particular value, which we have calculated 6.625, okay? 6.625. And we'll apply it in all the walls which you are getting or the beams sorry so once you have applied the loads here uh, you can see in the 3d view the loads are you know shown here let's go to the le next level and uh, we'll apply the same select dead and uh, select full udl and uh, this value 6.625 6.625 and apply it on all the beams so this is the load of the masonry or the brick wall with plaster on the bricks. Now, for the next floor, you can note that in the next floor, there will be no brick walls of it. There will be only parapet walls. So the entire calculation will change. Okay. How it will change? 
So uh, you know, 20 will be same 20 kilometer per meter cube. That is the unit weight which you've taken as an average of brick and plaster into the thickness uh, will be remain the same 0.125 which you have taken only the height will change the default height for the parapet wall is around you know two feet to three feet so let's take 2.5 feet so if you divide 2.5 by 3.28 it comes around 0.762 so we'll just apply here into 0.762 we are taking uh, two and a half feet walls for the parapet wall or 760 mm enter it comes as 1.905 let's take two on the to go on the safer side so here we'll apply the load of two kilonewton per meter along the boundary uh, for considering the load of the parapet wall so that also very uh, you, you should not miss that you should not apply the full uh, you know you know loads which you're applying here above on the terrace floor because we want don't want to put any extra load in the structure only the loads which are acting those we want to Consider because already we are considering a lot of factor of safety. So we'll go to the topmost level. For that, you can go to structure, go to levels here, and uh, go to the terrace floor, the structure too. Here, just open this dead and then click on full URL. And uh, what we are considering here for the safety two. So go to here and uh, along the periphery, just apply all the loads. Here. So like this, you can check in the structure 3D, these loads have been applied. You know, for this portion, uh, in the staircase portion, where you are actually having the uh, full walls and go to this particular level, uh, N structure 2, and then apply it 6.625 load. You just change this 6.625 and then apply it in here for the staircase portion, okay? So after this is done, so the door of the staircase have been assigned dead load we are done with it now let's consider the live load click on impost and uh, click on level load so imposed load we are considering here uh, a load of 2 kilonewton per meter square for you know this residential building you can consider the table number one of is 875 part two that is the code for the live load okay for different buildings you'll find different things available there so just apply it here and here and uh, for the staircase portion uh, as prior code we are applying three kilonewton per meter uh, square so just apply three as live load on the staircase portion just use this three here so all the loads have been applied and we have applied you know maximum loads which can be possible in terms of the dead load and the live load now we can proceed just uh, click on escape and after that you can click on validate to check whether everything is okay everything is okay till now now we'll move on to the next load which you need to apply is a seismic load so uh before applying the seismic load uh, i want to show you some materials which i'll provide you can download the is 875 you know sorry uh, is 1890 directly and i'll I give all this in the in description the link of the file so first of all uh what we need to see is the seismic zones so if you just go into this uh is 1893 which is the latest one that is the 2016 one so you will find here in uh, page number uh this uh this is annexure e you will find page uh in this annexure you will find that there are different uh areas in india cities in india and of the cities you will find the zone and the zone factor so you'll find that here zone and the zone factor so suppose we are designing for you know your let's say a particular city here uh let's say we're designing for uh, guwahati or you know Imphal. so that particular is zone five and uh, that for both guwahati it's zone five and the zone factor is 0.36 okay and then uh next thing which you need to know is the soil type and the soil type will find in this uh figure two that is a medium soil uh this type two just more commonly used rock or hard soil and soft soil description you will find below the table number two and uh table number eight you will find the importance factor here earlier there were two importance factor now another one is added in the new code so 1.5 for important buildings examples are given bus stations example metro stations and residential buildings which have you know more than 200 percent occupancy like that in the case of big apartments this will be 1.2 and for all other buildings like this building normal small you know house residential building it will be one okay 
and the next thing which you need to know is the response reduction factors so the building type which you are going to use uh, that is this building is our special uh, that is smrf that is rc buildings with special moment uh, resisting frame so this is our building which are going to design right now and generally this building is used uh, that is smrf and you need to use a response reduction factor of 5 so these i am showing because it comes in tecla automatically some things but in some other software you need to take uh, so you should know these basic things and if you can uh, go want to know in detail you can just go into the is uh, 1893 code so uh, after that uh, let's go back and apply the seismic load quickly process is very simple go to seismic load click on seismic wizard and after that uh, use the code spectra i'll show the easiest method and uh, then you should ignore seismic below your plinth level so in this case our plinth level is the structure base so we'll ignore seismic below that all other factors it will take automatically as we are taking guwahati zone 5 and the importance factor should be one here for the residential building type of soil uh, will taking uh, medium soil and uh, the zone factor it takes automatically don't need to do anything click on next and uh, uh, there are a lot of methods in which you can do the you know your earthquake load uh, we will use model response spectrum analysis and it gives a little bit on the higher side but but uh, we can design it using that so we'll click on next and uh, you know this structure type i already told you we are using you know rc moment resisting frames and uh, here we'll select that rc moment resisting frames and click on next and we are using special moment frame system and special moment frame system so that i've shown in code that we are using special moment frame system and with the response reduction factor as you can see from the code it takes automatically so don't need to do anything so these are the cell you know the, your seismic weight includes the dead load and the live load so we'll include that all that and then next and then finish so then it will generate some load combinations for the seismic load so just select the scenario as uh, you know operating and then I click on next and you can see uh, as i'm designing with the indian code so we have the limit state combination denoted by ls and the working stress combination denoted by wgs so generally we use the limit state combination for building design click on next click on finish so the earthquake load has been applied now the most important steps is the load combination just click on generate here and then uh, click on next and then you can select the limit state load combination uh, this you can select or don't select also that doesn't matter click on next and then click on finish after that click on ok this is done and uh, after that click on validate to check whether everything is okay we're all good till now now click on design and there are various things but for you i'll recommend only just to do this thing design on static to design that so it will take some time depending upon uh, what is the speed and what is the configuration of your system and after that it will design and immediately you can see that these are the warnings and uh, and uh, the elements which will pass it will show in green since you provided you know sufficient members nothing will you know fail eventually but if you're providing insufficient size the any particular thing might fail and in the plinth level don't worry about if something is failing because in the plinth level in this software uh, if you have if you don't apply slab then it comes the warning comes so don't need to worry about that this warning and another warning in foundation which i'll tell you later so uh, now basically we are end of the we are at towards the end of the seventh part that is the uh, design part and uh, how to uh, just study the analysis results will be the eighth part so i recommend you take a break and come after that welcome back after the break so in the previous uh, session that is the seventh session we have designed the building and uh, we had applied the loads and designed the building now we are going to learn what are the about the analysis methods so these structural what what do you mean by structural analysis so we'll just just uh, do uh, very briefly structural analysis and structural design so you need to know it because if any uh, in any interview or anywhere you uh, are asked this question we all know the theory but i'm just uh, seeing from, uh, the definition from my experience and the practical terms so what is structural analysis structural analysis is simply the determination of the internal forces based upon the reaction of the external forces so now what is it uh, what does it mean so i'll just write it here so determination of internal so this is the definition my definition of the structural analysis 
and very simple and the simple definition which i could find is the determination of the internal forces so what are these internal forces internal forces are you know this bending moment shear force which we have studied in the structural analysis so internal forces what are they they are the bending moment and the shear force the axial force uh torsion so everything is the uh, the internal forces so it, it these internal forces develop as a resistance to the external forces and only if we apply the you know external forces then we determine the internal forces so this process is called the structural analysis so the structural analysis of has a value i'll also modify this determination of uh, value you can just add any any of the language value magnitude or direction so i'll just keep you to that internal forces value magnitude direction so you'll find the value of a particular internal force and after that you need to provide the size of the member to resist that internal force that thing is called structural design so structural design what is structural design this is a simple definition this is not a bookish definition what i want to say is that suppose you want to have determined the value of bending moment shear force torsion now uh, suppose you have determined the this uh, all these factors of particular beam so now we need to determine whether suppose i have given uh, first of all initially i have taken a beam size of 250 to 300 so now if this forces uh, which are generated due to the application of all the dead load live load load combination seismic load wind load which i have provided if they are sufficient to be resisted by this uh, particular you know size of the beam then my design will be safe okay so then my design will be safe and then my structural design will be okay but it will be only be okay what if i provide here to 15 to like say let's say uh, 500 now in that case i am providing an uneconomical section because in actual when you are uh, constructing the building for your client or for yourself also the cost of the construction is a very important part and that's why people pay structural engineers not only to design a safe structure but also an economical structure you give only what is required only what is required not you know more excessively than that you can go on the safer side but there should be limit you cannot over design structures so to find an economic size is also very important that you provide the size which is required not too much more than what is required okay so that is also very important okay so let's uh, that's enough of the theory let's uh, let's jump on to the you know practical part where we will apply and see the results which we have done for that you need to introduce yourself to the views so you can see there are very various views here so first of all you see the structural view then you see this uh, uh, you know other view which is called the solver view and then you see the results view so in the results view you will find everything including the shear force bending moment everything so let's find out first the uh, shear force and bending moment so first of all here you will see some options just uh, just uh, click on this forces option and uh, after that uh click on this results option and this actual force is on so we are seeing the actual forces here okay these are the, the these i'm doing for the text and this i'm doing for the results so you can see the actual force which you are generated next uh we are seeing here let's see shear major and you can see the major shear force here and let's see the shear minor and you can see the minor shear force similarly moment major you can find out and moment minor you can find out so suppose i want to see everything in detail i'll just uh, right click on it and just open load analysis view i can see the ild the sfd and the bmd of everything at the same time okay so this is very helpful and uh, if i want to see the deflections i can see the deflections as well and i'll just turn off the you know the all other results and i'll turn off the text for the deflection so when there, there is a you know large deflection you'll find here things for the deflection as well and you can change uh, here suppose i want to change it to the load combinations suppose i want to apply this load combination and i can see the deflection in here okay so this can be done and you can check the deflection here and also there are you know other things which you can do as well and we can if you want to just uh, increase or decrease the you know you know this magnitude in which they are showing the deflections you can also check that so this particular things we can check so we have uh, seen how to check the deflection the shear force 
bending moment and axial force so there are many other things but we'll go slowly the one thing which we want is right now is the reactions so we'll just turn on the reactions here and uh, go to the results and you find this all the things which we have uh, just seen and one is the torsion you know we just turn on the forces you can also see the value of this uh, torsion so uh, we'll just turn off these forces and just turn on the reactions and you can see this reaction tab and in the reaction tab you can find various forces for which you can find out the you know reaction suppose moment measure that we're taking and uh, if you want to display this uh, you know reactions you can also find out and display this particular reaction and we can also you know just vary between any load combination like this or any load like this like for, for dead load we want to see the reactions so like this we can uh, you know see the reactions there are options for tab and or tabulation as well i'll show it but uh, right now let's move on because there are a lot of things to cover but you have this all these you know things in this particular results tab and which you can find out all the analysis results and the main things i have shown you and the other things uh, will make a small videos in part to show you but these are the major things and these are the most required things which you need to know so let's move on and we have finished the uh, this particular phase and we'll move on to the next phase so welcome to the ninth phase of this particular session and this hope you had a break properly and uh, this session we are going to see how to you know check the design results or how to interpolate if you are required to change any design results how to do it so first of all i'll go to this results window and go to home okay and i'll just turn on the turn off this loading so you're not don't, don't require this loading uh, again so first of all i'll just click on design all static again and uh, to just bring the design results once again so the design results are in front of me now first of all what the first thing which i need to check is the design results of my, my columns so what are the design results of my columns which have been used so i'll just select here and then just, just click on check member 300 and 300 is the size four bars of 16 mm has been provided in all these uh, in, in this particular column starting from the bottom to the top so i'll check the column which might have the maximum load this one and then see check member this also has four bars of 16 mm and i'll check another column just to be sure whether all columns have four bars of 16 mm or not so four bars of 16 mm is there so you know this you can see this ratio here uh why if it goes one or more than one it is failed so i am pretty we are pretty much you know safe in terms of the columns so the columns is not an issue here okay so in detail we'll just check when you just go to the drawing but now for checking two or three columns we know that four bars of 16 mm are provided so we don't need to change anything so suppose you want to change the number of bars here you can go to this uh, you know design and uh, you can go to the settings and you can go to this particular option of column reinforcement layout and you can change the grade of steel and the minimum and maximum bars used so you can do it for the columns beams and everything so i had already done it so that's why it is coming and if you want to change it you can go uh, and change using the procedure i have just mentioned so let's check out the plane beam so this is the you know longest plane beam let's uh, just check uh, what is the reinforcement which has been applied i'll just click on check member static and you can use you can see that uh, this particular first uh, you know uh, just first uh, this span that is this one it goes from uh, you know top to bottom so what is bottom to top so this is the first span 212 and 212 it is passing so it is okay in the next span which you're seeing this is also 212 212 this small span and in the next span also two bars of 12 and two bars of 12 in the top and the bottom so it is not max more reinforcement or the heavy reinforcement provided so it is okay so since this is okay then that also might be okay just let's just check one particular uh middle beam since this beam is also getting a, another load so we'll select this check member static and you can see here uh, we have this two bars of 12 and two bars of 12 so there might be a warning of axial force and, and moment uh, which i have told you since you're not applying any slab in the plane level, this warning might come. We can ignore it. Okay. As per my experience. So next we'll move on to the you know roof beams. So let's just select this max roof beam. It has the maximum span. If it is okay, then everything else is okay. The so check member and do check member static. You can see from the first span, two bars of 12 and two bars of 12. And next also two bars of 12. So actually we have provided sufficient size for this uh, particular size of model. So this is pretty much safe 
in terms of designs. So 350 mm into 250 mm into 350 mm size is safe for all the beams here. So you know these uh, are the main checks which we need to do, and uh, we need to ensure you know the design interpolation. If we have large structure, then other things we also need to check. This will come by experience, but uh, since you have all the data that is the center line and all for this particular model, I recommend you just proceed and complete one project so that you gain some confidence. So uh, take some rest and uh, come back for the next particular part that is for us assigning the foundations. So welcome to the next part of our session. So that is these, the 10th session. And uh, in this particular session, we're going to design the foundation. We're going to assign the foundation and design the foundation. So this part, 10th part is for the foundation. So let's go and click on foundations here. You can select pad base column. Before that, go to settings and make sure you go to foundations and uh, go to isolated footings, reinforcement layout and change the maximum and minimum number of bars. For me, we have maximum uh, minimum number of bars at 10, I have set and maximum uh, day of bar is your 16. You can also reduce the spacing to 200 for the maximum. Okay. Click on OK. Don't need to do anything. I'll show you the simplest available method. Just click on this pad base column and uh, zoom out in the model of the, in the 3D view. Just uh, do it like this. As you can see, pad base columns have been applied here, but all the sizes are the same. Just click on design pad bases and everything will be designed. So now there will be warning of development like you don't need to worry about that because we have already, you know, this, uh, if you design a BS code or in any other code, this warning will not come. Only by the IS code, this warning comes and we already provide development length in the columns. Uh, that is the, for the, you know, this uh, put into the columns. So I'll show that in the drawing part. So don't need to worry about if there is warning comes, it's a glitch. So, uh, but I'll, I've, uh, you know, just uh, shown, ignored a, a major uh, possible part of designing the foundation. So I'll just press, press control plus Z and I'll show you the major part. So if, when you click on pad base column, you have the option of inserting your SBC of soil, the unit weight of soil and the SBC of soil. So by the soil test report, you'll find the SBC of soil. If your client or the building which you're designing uh, is for a big company, then you'll definitely have the soil test report. But for normal clients, you generally, uh, in some cases, you don't have the soil test report. But if you just visit the site and see that soil is not stable, I recommend you going for a, a soil test report to just be sure. And if you're sure that it is, it has a good uh, soil, then check out the other SBC of you know surrounding areas. But these are you know these things come with experience. But generally, by default, copy book procedure is that you should and must have the soil test report before designing the foundation, because that gives you safety for yourself as a consultant or a structural designer and also to the client also, okay? So insert the value of the SBC here. Suppose uh, we want to go with an SBC of, let's say, uh, 130 here and uh, we want to design the foundation. So since the earlier was 250 and now I've given 130, now automatically the size of the foundations will increase. I've just applied the foundations and clicked on design pad bases. Now the pad bases will be designed and as you can see, I clicked on escape and the pad bases designed. So uh, it seems like this is the maximum size of the pad base, which has been provided 1450 to 1450. And we'll just select right click and then we'll just se select here uh, design member. Okay. So design member, you can see, uh, as I told you, there is a warning of development length of the member. You don't need to worry about that. Concrete cover and you can see applied loads, everything you can see here. Okay. So, and if you want to check here, uh, you can see right click on that and uh, you can generate report for member okay in this particular thing you can see 12 mm bars at the spacing of 200 mm has been used but generally if you have a small building it's preferable that you just group this element because you don't want different sizes okay so you can group these elements in the you know you know in this particular model itself so this is 1400 this is 1450 this is 1300 and this is 1250 this is 1250 and this is 1250 so these two are the same 1250 and this is, uh, you know, 1250. This is 1100 and uh, this is 1100. So these two are okay, 1100, 1100 for the first one. And this one is 1250, 1250, 1250 and 1250. So these are also okay. So let's make this uh, three, you know, four as the same size. Okay, so this is 1450 into 1450 and depth 300 mm. So we'll just change this also, uh, the depth from 1400 to 1450. And here also, we'll change it to 
and one for touching. You also change it. One for touching and this one for touching. So this you, you don't need to change because we already have a you know footing of one to five zero. So I'll keep this one to five zero at only uh, because already we have a foundation of one to five zero. Okay. So this you can do like this. So right now we are going to the towards the end of the tenth session, which is for the design of foundation. You can take a break and come back. And the next session will be about generating drawings. So we need a fresh mind for that. So make sure to take, take a cup of tea, green tea, whatever you're comfortable with, and then come back. Welcome to the next part or the 11th part of our session. So in this particular session, we are going to generate some drawings. So first of all, we are simply going to go to our foundation level. So for that, we're going to go to home and we're going to open the structure window and going to go to the bottom most level. So the first drawing which you're going to generate is the column layout. Make sure your AutoCAD is turned on. So because all the drawings which you will be generated will come in this AutoCAD. So go to your draw. And first of all, uh, we'll select a general element. And the first thing which I want is a column layout. For saving the files, because you want to save it at a particular location, uh, just select your location and save it in that location. Otherwise, you might not be able to find the file or you'll be able to, it will be difficult. Okay. So first thing which uh, we are going to uh, find out is the column layout. I'm going to just uh, write here, rename it as my column layout. Okay. So I'll just click on save and hit OK. So once you hit OK, it will open automatically in AutoCAD or any card software which you're using currently. So as you can see, my column layout is ready. And uh, in this, you know, you can just uh, check the center line distance and the, you know, your particular, uh, your unit settings and the dimension settings, the text settings, all things you need to do. And after that, you can check, but these are all perfectly as per scale and you can use it. So this is the, you know, the column sizes and the center line diagram. Only you need to change the scale of your final drawing. Okay. The next thing which you need is the foundation layout. For that, we'll just click on this foundation layout and then same process. We'll just name this file uh, in our particular location, which we are using currently. And then we'll just name here foundation layout. Okay. And then click on save. And click on okay. So this foundation layout will also open and as you can see this is the foundation layout which we have generated here and uh, here you can see foundation sizes and depths here so any changes which you want you can do like you know just arranging this text and arranging the tables here the reinforcement details are given and here the sections are given so you can arrange these drawings as per a preference but it's good that we have all the drawings itself generated we don't have to do much work the next thing which you want is the plinth level beam column plan so we're going to go to the plinth level, uh, that is the structure base, and we're going to generate the general element drawing. So select the general element and then select this as plinth level uh, beam column layout. And then hit okay. You can see the plinth level beam column layout here. Now you're seeing this uh, particular beam sizes and column numbers, uh, sorry, column markings, and as well as your beam markings. Suppose the marking for you know this particular beam is you can see here for this particular beam is crb d crb to d1 and this is crb3 this particular beam is crb3 d1 you just uh, remove it and you can see it crb3 d1 for this particular beam and crb2 d1 for this particular beam and this particular column is a crc d1 so now we have this in our marking so where to get the details like the reinforcement size and the uh, you know sizes we already got from here, but the reinforcement details where to get. So for that, uh, you can also find out the drawings. So simply click on the beam schedule and click on OK. Uh, you can also you can also use I uh, could have used the earlier steps of you know just uh, seeing the reinforcement. So uh, you know just saving the file in different location. I have not done that since I've already shown you. So as you can see, you know, have to, uh, you know, in the bottom we have two bars of 12 mm, and in the center in the in the top also we have two bars of 12 mm. So it shows the reinforcement of the beams in a single go. And then for same for the column, uh, for the column schedule, just click on the column schedule, hit all the columns because you want details of all the columns. And uh, I'll name this file this time, save this file, and this file will be saved in the location uh, which we had done earlier. So this will be, we'll call it column details. 
or the column schedule so you can save it as just hit okay and uh, see the column schedule come up so this is the column schedule as you can see here all bars are of what you know 16 mm core bars of 16 mm are used in all the columns and uh, you can see these are starter bars which are provided four bars of 16 mm in all the columns so that's why which give the development length so that's why i told to ignore this particular uh, you know warning which is what's coming in the foundation because we're already providing the, providing the starter bars at the development length for the footing and the column junction and you will also find you know the details at the total length here available and also the total weight here available so total weight here and the total length here so you'll find all these things so this pretty much sums up our you know that is 11th part or the 11th session and we will move on to the next session you can take a break and be ready for the next and the final session so welcome to the final session the 12th session of this lecture generating reports so first of all we know how why you know reports what are the importance of the reports reports if you are a you know consultant or you are designing a you know structure for anyone you need to give a proof that you have applied all the loads properly and all the design has been done as per your particular code we are designing as per in this condition we are designing ys code whichever code you are using it is is properly done you need to give proof so that's why it, uh, that's one of the purposes of report and uh, reports you have to submit to a client if you are a consultant you have to submit to the approval authority or uh, if you are a student or a research student then you have to submit in your you know uh, thesis or a defense and these are the various uses next thing is that in using this report you can get a detail of the material quantity take off so you can generate the quantity of concrete and quantity of steel so for that you are using and for checking other things there are various things but here i'll just give you an idea okay so first and the most important uh, you know thing which uh, you know we can we can do in using this report uh, i'll just show you most commonly used ones so there is one material listing i'll just show you this is my favorite one because uh, when we are designing a structure if you don't know the material listing this really helps us to you know draw give a rough estimate here you not find the accurate one i'm just skipping the most important part the details and mention you can make the pdf or excel file so you'll find the total volume of concrete used. The total volume of concrete used is 33.9 NQ in this particular building. And the total mass of, you know, this steel, which has been used is three, um, you know, this 3045 kg. So this steel is with 10% allowance, but the concrete quantity is accurate. So it helps a lot to estimate. So next thing which we uh, just uh, see is the building loading. We'll just click it on the show report. And here you can see the structure of the loading here. And you can see the various building loadings which have been given here. So all the loadings which you have found given, so as you, I have not applied the wind load and snow load, so it is it has been clearly written here. So this gives a proof of the loading which you have applied. So next, uh, what you can see is the design report, building design report. So it will take some time to just show the report because it is, it is this is a you know large file, and in this particular file, whatever the members which you have designed, uh, you know whether there are pass or fail. So everything will come. So if any member is failed, then it will be reflected in this particular report. And all the reinforcement details also of each particular member will be reflected. So whatever design sheet you give, and in addition to this particular report, if you submit that, then your final you know, report is validated and your final design is okay. So these are the things uh, which are found in this 12th session. Hope you can learn something from this video. I'll follow up with uh, you know just more videos uh, in my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll continue to do so. And uh, if you have learned something, make sure you just drop a comment uh, in the comment section and let me know your progress. And also stay connected with me uh, through LinkedIn as well. So we're all going to make it, bro. And we're all going to learn and share with each other uh, whatever knowledge and experience. And we're going to shine in the civil engineering field. That's our motto. So we'll ending this session now. Have a good day and uh, keep learning. Bye-bye.